I think we have a really good amount of people here. So uh, with that, uh, I will stop sharing and I'll pass it over to our guest, um, okay. Justin Cheng, who is a GIS lead at uh, Mobi, and he has uh, a really uh, exciting presentation to demonstrate how he uh, uses uh, Felt and QGIS to streamline collaboration at Mobia. Thank you, Anna. Uh, let me just share my screen real quick. And before I do, I can share my slides here. Okay. So can everyone see my screen? Oh, not yet. Right. Okay. Now we can. Yep. Awesome. So I also um, left a link in the chat so you guys can actually join me in this journey, basically. Okay, so uh, good morning in, to you guys at Oakland. I, I, I just placed here in Oakland where uh, that's whereabouts uh, felt is, right? So yes, it's our it's our HQ. You know, yeah, know this. Yeah, so. I have to take you all over, all over across the the United States, and actually, it's about five thousand six hundred kilometers. It's I'm actually here in Halifax, over in the east eastern seaboard of Canada, and uh, I'm also I, I'm a GIS analyst for a company called Mobia Technology Innovations, and uh, uh, we are a leading expert in providing system integration and technical program serv um, services um, to all, all our clients across Canada. And one of our primary uh, sectors that we are focused on is telecommunications. And we've been, that's the, um, how we built our business. And we've been in business since 1985. And our headquarters is in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, but we do have employees all across Canada, about 600. And if you're interested in knowing about Mobia, uh, you can always click on the map. Uh, and there's the link, the awesome link that you can make with Felt, and you can go to Mobia and learn about Mobia. And also uh, in Mobia, if you want to learn about GIS, you can also learn about GIS at Mobia um, as well. And um, I'm going to talk briefly about um, my work at, at Mobia. So I'm a GIS analyst. So that means that um, I do a lot of things um, in GIS, basically. So as a GIS, I, I do um, um, work um, with GIS tools like Q, QGIS or QGIS or um, pro proprietary software like uh, Esri's uh, Arc, ArcMap, Arc, Arc GIS Pro, and also ArcFM, which is the telecom communication utilities uh, program um, that you can use with uh, the Esri te technology. Um, and also, I do um, actually work with PostGIS. Uh, which is a uh, which is uh, a spatial extension of Postgres SQL uh, database. So it allows you to uh, use uh, GIS on top of the databases. So I have a setup where I use PostGIS on top and on top of it QGIS. And uh, uh, where we kind of use uh, QGIS and PostGIS um, is um, is that we use it for to draw plans and also um, make uh, PDFs of all those areas that we cover. So we work in Ontario, Quebec, uh, Nova Scotia, and uh, New Brunswick, and all these other areas across Canada. And we help our clients uh, design uh, the distribution network and uh, things like that regarding the fiber to the home um, in initiative, and also for the copper decommission um, projects. So we use QGIS to draw. Um, uh, maps and actually export it out in PDFs, and that's one just one aspect of using our workflow. So, and then uh, we were thinking of using it to other aspects of uh, QGIS and PostGIS, and one of them is using Felt. And we've been using Felt to kind of share information to our clients, and um, to Felt to kind of visualize the tools and. Uh, I think one of the issues uh, that we actually dealt with when we were using QGIS and PostGIS together is that it's fine internally and fine with our designers and whatnot, and uh, we can deliver the products. But sometimes you, you want to share your uh, da data or share your information with your clients, right? And you wanted to share it in a map, a nice looking map, 
a nice looking WebGIS map. And uh, the technology out there, uh, there's a lot of things things you can, you can really build your own web map and uh, you can use proprietary software, but sometimes it doesn't align with what they have and what you have. It's, it's a miss, uh, miss, a lot of misses, right? So it's hard to actually get them on board. And sometimes they don't want to use QGIS to look at the data. And sometimes it takes a while to, for them to learn it and show it, show what it, whatever information you have. And oftentimes we have um, situations where we're using uh, Google's uh, KML, KMZ files, which um, it's, it's great for points and whatnot, but like it's not, doesn't do justice to all the hard work that our designers has been doing and some of the data that we can show in a WebGIS web map format. And this is where FEL comes in. We can actually put, uh, use QGIS to do all the, um, the um, like, uh, arrangements and also changing the attributes and everything, but also we can show beautiful maps and beautiful uh, web application to our clients using Felt. So I'd like to take you to Windsor, where um, where our other offices, and uh, just want to make, mention briefly that you know um, Felt is a QGIS sustaining member, but also Mobia is a QGIS sustaining member. So you can find Mobia here and you can find Felt here. You can't miss Felt, but if you come way down here, you can see Mobia. And the tool that I just mentioned about using QGIS and PostGIS, uh, it's, I, I recorded a video last year for PostGIS Day, so you can watch it uh, on YouTube. So if you are interested, you can watch it and uh, learn about our setup is QGIS and PostGIS. So let's let me take you to um, Vancouver, where our other office is, which is like three thousand kilometers from where Windsor, Ontario, is. So I'm just using the Felt's uh, route tool, which gives me approximate you know distance between two places, our offices. So in Vancouver, there's another office there. So, but I just want to throw out there some good resources regarding QGIS. I know. Uh, QGIS and QGIS for GIS folks, it's um, not an not an issue, but like for non-GIS folks, uh, because it's open source, uh, it's free freely available, and they want to use it. And one of the hurdles is that it's really hard to get into, and if you don't really have some understanding of it, it might be a lot. And uh, so there's a really great documentation called a general introduction to GIS. Uh, which kind of, you know, it's also great for even GIS professionals to uh, brush up on some of the GIS terms and some of the concept and whatnot. So I advise you to read that and also the QGIS training manual. So the QGIS training manual is what we use internally at Mobia to train our uh, designers who, are, who doesn't have a GIS background. And uh, we train them to how to use GeoPackage, how to use, uh, how to draw in QGIS and, and things like that. So very basic stuff, but you can follow along the manual really easily. You can you get a data set where you can play around in QGIS and you can do um, whatever uh, it's needed. And you can, according to your level of understanding, you can actually go through the manual and learn about QGIS very easily. And you can even go deeper into like uh, databases and other explanations that you will no normally find uh, in one, one go in the QGIS training manual. I think it's a great documentation. So hopefully you get a kind of a look at look into it when you have a chance. Okay, so I'm gonna take you to the Northern Territories now. So sorry about taking around Canada. Uh, Canada is a big country. Uh, I know US is a, is, is a huge country, but like Canada is across um, different cities. So I want to take you to, uh, a city called Luxelke. So uh, don't shoot me for mispronouncing the name. It's hard to pronounce. <laughs> uh, so it's in the Northern Territories. And um, the reason I brought you here is because I wanna share uh, a map um, that we've used felt for. And uh, I want to, for you to experience what we actually um, built through felt. So, so this is the map. I don't know if you can see it, uh, that we've built using felt. And because some of the data is uh, uh, it's, um, kind of not open uh, data, so we, I thought it would be great if I could actually build one using open, uh, open data. 
so um so there's um there's a public data set called atlas for the it's it's uh there's a link is here and it's in the arcgis rest service directory so it's a rest kind of directory so the good thing about felt is that you can bring that felt uh data into uh this data into felt uh seamlessly as well so i think i try that here i can show you what i did yeah, I did. So I can bring in the data. Um, I think it's here. Yeah, there you go. So I can see all the data. That's fine. I can see the data really nicely and whatnot. But the problem is um, you want to kind of edit it and you want to do it um, so that you want to do it in own, your own format and you want to do um, things like maybe you wanted to add a latitude and longitude and you want to show it as a label and things like that. So that would be done in QGIS uh, at Mobia or any, any, any other company who wants to do, um, kind of deal with it. So I think this is a great um, stop point for me to move on to uh, QGIS. Okay. Hope everyone can see it. Okay. Oops, just trying to move the Zoom uh, channel. Okay, so there you go. So. I've actually brought in the data set that I just showed you uh, in QGIS. So in QGIS, there's a nifty uh, um, menu where you can actually bring in the ArcGIS REST server. And all I had to do was have a new connection and bring it in. And I could bring those layers in rather simply here in uh, QGIS. And I just used the open street map as a kind of the background base layer. And I think, um, yeah, Alvaro did a great uh, YouTube video on how to bring in, um, you know, different kind of, uh, uh, I think, uh, sorry for, for Alvaro, maybe it was uh, Bo uh, Boone, but there's a great plugin that you can bring in. It's called uh, Quick Map Services, which gives you all the base maps uh, you want. And basically what happens is you get uh, a lot of different um, base maps. So when you go here, you can actually, um, this will help you to kind of get more services. And when you save it, when you open it, uh, you can get um, other services like uh, Google, for example. Yeah, uh, maybe you want Google Hybrid, right? And so you can do things like that with um, those this Nifty plugin. So I won't go into that too too much. Anyhow, um, another plugin that you want to check out is Felt's plugin, which you can really easily find by just going to all. There's about one thousand, and you can find it. I've already installed it, and so you can add, uh, install the Add to Felt plugin. So anything that you you think that QGIS don't have, there's a plugin for it, basically. So remember the saying when you're using the first using the smartphone, there's an app for everything. There's a kind of a saying within the QGIS user says, there might be a QGIS plugin for everything. So um, you'll find what you need uh, in the plugin section where um, it's not in the core function of QGIS. Okay, so now, uh, I just covered how you can bring in some base layers and uh, and with QGIS, you have the XYZ tile that comes with the um, basic OpenStreetMap. So that's, you don't, if you don't, are not particular about base maps, you can bring that in. But um, there are other great functions with QGIS. And um, today um, I'm gonna actually talk about how you can actually um, do stuff in the attribute table. So for instance, you have an attribute table that you just, download um, brought in from the open data, but you want to add the columns and want to edit it, right? So what I did was I actually selected some of the things and exported it as a geo package and kind of so, so that um, I could add data and actually calculate some of the things that I want. And to do that um, in QGIS, you can easily add columns 
And the reason I'm adding, adding columns is I'm thinking ahead here. If I'm drawing into felt, I want to use um, a column as a label for my layers. And um, so I'm, I'm trying to use a label that shows my sometimes a status, sometimes use um, the coordinates to show the coordinates as well. So all I need to do is add a new field and actually add those fields. But um, most times you want to actually calculate something within QGIS, right? So um, for example, I can create a new field and I can um, do some calculation. And in QGIS, there's, it uses an expression called the QGIS expression, which is, uh, um, I would say it's closer to uh, a SQL um, than any other languages. So it's a functional language. So it's, it allows you to do many things uh, that um, normally you would have to learn about and think in a programming language, but in QGIS, you can use the QGIS, QGIS uh, expression to do that. So for latitude and longitude, I, I would actually use, a, I'll transform it so that I would actually um, um, make it into a way that it will show the latitude and longitude perfectly in, in a projection that I want and things like that. So it, this will help you uh, if you're not, um, um, if you want to actually transfer it into a different uh, kind of way, a uh, projection, sorry. So um, I do have like a documentation. So if you are worried that I'm not following uh, about all the things I'm explaining today. So basically you can act, it, it will be in the map that I shared basically. So don't worry about it. So once I do that, um, so a lot of things can be done in QGIS. And once I do that, and um, I can always go here, once the QGIS, uh, sorry, the felt plugin is uh, installed, I go to export and share layer to felt. It's that easy. And it, it happens very instantaneously. So I've already done uh, some of the calculations um, for, for this set webinar. So basically what I was able to do was uh, I was able to um, this is the kind of, um, it's a replica of the map that I, I just showed you earlier of the construction map. So we are talking with our clients and we wanted to actually communicate about, uh, about a polls. And I'm using an open data set uh, of par polls to do it from the uh, Northern Territories to actually show what I, we're doing. So we're using felt to communicate with a client, like uh, things like asking about uh, is, are these poles cleared or are like, are they isolated? And then um, uh, Zhang Yu, who created the original map, Zhang Yu Komu, and uh, Jocelyn uh, Leclerc, um, they, they've actually uh, made this map. I just, I'm just creating a, a replication of it. And what it does is for our client is to kind of see where all the poles are and where the problems are, and then kind of communicate with our clients regarding it. And um, and also we can use the nifty pen to circle things and things like that. So these these cannot be done in QGIS. Uh, felt is what, where it just um, allows us to communicate better with our clients, and all the um, like the data wrangling and things uh, are done in QGIS and helps just to um, do it. And if I go back to QGIS, uh, what I did was um, remember, oh I didn't mention it so. I did create a status with uh, indication that I want some some of them to be yellow, some of them blue, um, kind of a ca uh, category, so it, and also the coordinates and whatnot. So I did that on purpose because I wanted to actually show it here. So if I go here, uh, I'm using the the categories uh, the, the, in the general tab. I'm using the categories to kind of categorize. Um, all the blue and whatnot. And I just have to just make sure the color is in, in line with what I want. And um, yeah, so the blue is not transferred. I just changed it here so that it's much more um, kind of uh, visible for visible. So so the blue means it's not transferred. So in, in, in polls that there are polls that are new and old um, some are, some are online, some are offline. So you, um, 
there's that discrepancy. And then there are poles that are doesn't have uh, that do, does have anomalies. So we just want to mark it. And we also mark poles that needs to be replaced. So that's also be marked. And so I just um, used felt to kind of categorize the express some of the uh, problems. And for our clients, we can just go there, there and look at it and kind of um, see the problem and kind of comment on it. So a lot of, it's a great communication tool for our clients. And MAP itself is a great communication tool. And we're using uh, Felt to actually uh, engage with our customer better. And uh, yeah, so that's how we, we use Felt and um, how we, we uh, I'm just showing you how we can use, do that using an uh, open data set that I just showed you. Okay. And I think one thing I, I need to mention, uh, I, I just brought a meme. I think uh, some of you are familiar. Sometimes in GIS, uh, it's kind of confusing for folks to um, know about latitude and longitude. It, 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 like normally it is latitude and longitude, right? But like in GIS, a lot of the GIS softwares, the longitude is the X, the latitude is the Y. So, um, that's that's kind of like the meme about it. So in QGIS, it's the same. So the longitude, you think the longitude uh, is actually um, an X, latitude is the Y. So keep that in mind when you're doing that um, calculation I just showed you. Um, but you don't even have to worry too much about, uh, if you're kind of worried about um, the projections and whatnot, you don't have to actually worry about it because in the toolbox, all you have to do is if you have a certain projection, sorry, you can actually reproject it to WGS84 and then kind of add the geom to it. So um, you, there's always a tool for it as, as well. So you can always use a add geom attributes, which allows you, which gives you um, the X and Y coordinates. So there's there are a lot of tools in QGIS that you don't have to um, uh, understand 100%, but get the result that you want. And if it's a line structure, um, there's a way to actually um, figure out the length as well. So I just went ahead and kind of did the calculation. But um, one of the nifty tools that you always want to use is the field calculator. Um, so if I, you're updating a column, all you have to do is dollar sign length and it will calculate the lengths for you. And if you understand the rounding uh, function in QGIS, you can just round it to the, to the two, two decimals. And there you go. You have that two decimal round of the length. That's, that's what I just did. And in, um, in the map, I just showed you. Um, oh, here we go, sorry. There's the line. So here, um, you can actually have the length show up. I, I did did this uh, beforehand. So you can see the length. If you want to show the length of each line, you can do it. So I'm using uh, QGIS to kind of make the column and do the calculation and then kind of bring it here. And uh, I think also, I just want to, lastly but not least, I want to actually talk about um, counting. And a nifty tool that you always end up using is the select by location tool. And what it does is it you can within within a boundary you can you know count but you can do a lot of things counting and whatnot. And if you understand the concept of intersection, uh, contain and uh, touching and whatnot, then this is a very good tool to use. And to be fair, um, Felt just has a new tool called count points. So if you're just counting points within a boundary, you can use that as well. Just make sure that uh, you select the, the right boundary and select the right points. And I'm sure there's a video for that as well um, by Felt. Okay, and yeah, so that, that would be the tool that I would use uh, regarding um, trying to get select by location.
And going back to that map that I was just showing you, um, another um, nice thing about felt is that just wanted to share this map with you. So basically, what I can do is I can actually bring that layer in real easy by copy and pasting and build a second map here. Um, that so there you go you'll see what i was just showing you and uh, you can turn on and turn off the layers easily and basically and if you're wondering what these boxes are are these boxes are the index boxes that we use uh in our project so that these are the areas that the designers draw in pdfs and we're, we're showing uh, there's more to pdfs there's more um um kind of area that you can cover with maps and you can show the whole overview of things with with a felt map as opposed to a PDF uh, document. And um, as I've just demonstrated, you can actually communicate better with um, with felt and just you can scribble on it, you can write on it, you can actually talk about it and in, and kind of um, change the like the attribute, uh, not the attribute itself, but like the labels and and ask them to do um, do the layers and things like that. And and yeah, so that's how we are using Felt at Mobia. Yes, and uh, yes, that's that's about it that uh, I prepare for today. Awesome, thank you so yeah. much, Justin. Um, You're welcome. Well, with that, I wanted um, to open it for our uh, floor for questions. Um, I will steal, steal screen share from you. We have, um, uh, I'm seeing someone, someone is typing, but in the meantime, if you want to just um, go ahead and um, ask a question with your voice, we can also answer that. Um, Happy to, and I know that we also, someone was looking for uh, Justin's uh, best practices document. Here it is here on our um, on our map. Uh, you can uh, follow along this, well, this presentation is recorded. And of course you can also follow along Justin with um, this document. Uh, and I'm seeing our first question. Um, so what granularity do you have for security when sharing maps? Um, I'm going to pass it over to Alvaro, but I'm going to do a live demonstration as he speaks on our map. <laughs> wow. OK, live demo. So Annie is clicking right now, the top right corner on the share menu. And you can configure your different options there. As you can see, you can allow no one to view your maps. Well, only people that are invited specifically via email or on a certain team that you've invited. You can allow anyone with the link to view or to view and comment or to view and comment and edit. So you'd have those four options. Um, even if you've accidentally shared the link, you can always set the, the, the permission to none and people that haven't been added specifically via email will lose access. So even if you've accidentally shared the link, you can, you can set, like reel that back in. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alvaro. Um, any other questions for Justin or any is felt uh, dot com front end proprietary? Is it extendable through API? Yeah. Alvaro, do you have an answer here? Um, yes, the front end is proprietary, but we do have a felt API that you can use mm, for different options. So you can create maps and delete them as well, and you can upload data via the API. The API is actually what the QJS plugin uses. So you can use that to even create your own plugin or extension to another service if you wanted to. That's awesome. I, and I think Justin used our API, right, for one of the projects, or if I'm remembering this correctly. Uh, not really. <laughs> I was just oh. using a vanilla belt there. Oh, OK, OK, got yeah. it. OK, perfect. Um, Okay, we see another question here. Um, is felt a, uh, oh no, we here. Uh, are there plans for any more processing features? Oh, I love this question. Um, 
Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes, there are. Um, this first release was this first batch of processing features, but we do have on our roadmap to keep on extending that with more. So if there's, uh, I can use this moment to call out, if there's any specific processing features that you'd like to see analyses that you aren't capable of doing right now, feel free to reach out, write out the support. Um, we also have a form for feature request or reach out in the community Slack or in our subreddit. There's so many ways, but let us know because we really want to hear people's voices to see what we have to build next. Yeah, it's, it would be a huge help and we were really looking for feedback here. Okay, we have another great question. Is there any feature to it annotation layer? Um, yes, Justin actually showed a few of them. Uh, all of the, if you want a live demo, that one as well. Uh, Anya, up at the top in the toolbar, you have um, the marker tool, the text tool, the note tool, the link tool. All of those can be used for annotations. And it's completely called annotation if you hover over the main item. Yes, there it is. It's annotations. Yep. Perfect. Um, so, and yeah, I'm I'm using marker here to uh, check check off all the questions that we answered. So um, is it possible to share data between maps in felt? Um, yeah, so one of the really cool things, and Justin showed this as well, is that you can copy layers between maps. So you can not only copy the whole map and duplicate it, but you can also copy and paste a layer, which is really useful because, you know, say like your data is heavy, it takes a while to upload, or you've already styled it. You can just copy if you have a layer, Go to the overflow menu, that's the three dots. Go to copy and then just go to your other map and command V or control V and that'll paste it in. And I think I, I should add here is that you can add uh, data layers to your team data library. So um, here when I click on, um, we basically have uh, an, an option to click here and we can see all our internal felt layers that are shared just within our team. Um, that can be reusable. That that's the source of truth for anyone who's like creating maps with um felt and just wants to use like a resource that um that is shared across uh, teams or across teammates. Um, perfect. Um, is it possible to get a trial version for evaluation for the front end? That's a great question. Yeah, so um, felt all felt features are free to use until January 1st, 2024. After that point, there's still always going to be a free tier, but we'll have more limited functionality. So if you're planning on evaluating felt, the right time is right now because you can try out all the features and see for yourself what works for you. Awesome. Any recommendations on file types to be used in QGIS before exporting to felt? Uh, Justin, would you like to take this one? Sure. Um... I mean, it depends, but like you can upload anything. So <laughs> uh, you can upload post just layers. You can upload mm -hmm. geo package, but uh, like it depends. Like if you have to kind of, you know, package it into some format that's easier to sometimes, you know, um, you know, send it over email or send it over SharePoint or, or Google Docs or Google, I mean, sorry, Google Drive and whatnot. I would say geo package. So you can package all the different layers in one go and not really shape files because shape files are, there's a limit, character limit. There's 13 characters that you can, you can't go over 13 characters. So that itself is very limiting, but then again, shape files is very universal. Uh, so um, yeah. So if you, if you have the choice, I would say uh, chill package, if it's file. Um, yeah, that would be my go-to. Yeah. But also just to add, to that, um, the format that the QGIS plugin uses to upload to Felt is also GeoPackage. And if it's a raster, it's GeoTIFF. So you don't have to worry about which format you brought it into QGIS because okay. the plugin will do that export for you. And I think one thing I realized uh, while I was preparing for the webinar is that you know using um, a simple SQL, you can actually create a virtual layer in QGIS and you can even upload that. So if you're doing, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, can I just share for one second? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, just so the oh. yeah. Um, so what I mean by it, I just want to show what I mean is that you know, 
just an, we don't yeah. see your screen yep. quite yet. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So Perfect. what I mean by it is that virtual layer, you can create virtual layers in QGIS. And what is this? You can bring in uh, like the geo package uh, layers in, and you can create a simple intersection of those two layers into one layer. And you can even, uh, so you can test it and you can add it. And you can even bring that in. So if you are kind of keen on using SQL and you want, you want to do it in one layer, then you can, uh, that's also possible with, with uh, felt. Uh, that's my two cents. <laughs> awesome. Love that. Um, okay, I'm going to steal yep. scripture again. Um, okay, great. Uh, we have, um, oh, we have a question about mobile app. Is it on the roadmap? Um, not currently for at least for the, let's say, immediate future. But we'd also, as I said before, be really interested. If you have use cases that require a mobile app, let us know. We'd love to hear them and know how we can prove. Yeah. Um, awesome. And then uh, we have a question. How is upload performance with raster data? Oh, I think I copied that one twice, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, how is the upload performance? Well, I mean... The physical part of uploading is going to be conditioned by your network, of course, right? You have to upload the file to our servers. Um, once that happens, what ha basically what the felt processing pipeline does there is it takes your raster and it tiles it, right? So that we can serve it efficiently over the network. So that's going to depend on the size, but also on the internal structure of the raster. Um, I guess who asked this question? Um, I think that was Felipe. Have you had problems um, uploading raster data? Not really. Okay. Awesome. Then I guess it's good. Awesome. And then uh, also we have a question about conditioning, conditional labeling in maps. Does felt allow adding labels based on rules? Um, okay. This one's a bit tricky. Um, so if, have, if you've already used felt and you've done some labeling, you'll see that there are some labeling options you can choose, you know, um, let's say, I don't know, font size or font weight or stuff like that. But you can also um, go into what we call the felt style language and actually modify the styling in a more complex way. That supports some conditional options. For example, you can set a filter so that only um, certain points would be labeled instead of others. So there's some basic conditional labeling. It won't translate from the QJS plugin, though. The support for styling is uh, more limited right now. It will only carry over basic colors and strokes, but not any conditional labeling. Awesome. Um, and then um, we also have a question about what are the supported spatial references in the front end? Right. So everything that's displayed in Felt is as most web maps in Web Mercator. So 30, EPSG 3857, if you're familiar with that. Um, but when you upload data, you can upload it in any spatial reference system, and Felt will automatically convert that into um, Web Mercator or, well, Latitude, Longitude, and Web Mercator. So for upload, basically anything. Uh, and for visualization, it's going to be Web Mercator. Awesome. Uh, are there any other questions for Justin or for Alvaro, uh, I think at this point you can just um, unmute yourself and ask ask the question. Um, I want to allow some time for for extra extra questions for both speakers here. Very helpful. That's good. That's great. I actually have a comment for you, um, Justin. There's one thing that really caught my attention, uh, yeah. which was that you were saying that. Maps are great for communication. And I love that yeah. because we internally talk about that a lot, right? Like that yeah. we've traditionally learned that maps are like a read-only medium, like somebody makes them and then everybody else consumes them. And that's how we yeah. use say Google maps. But what we're going for here is like something different, right? Like a map is a document and you can use it to communicate in many ways via comments, via annotations, via different users in real time or a sync. So I think that's really cool. And I love the use of the squares for the PDFs because we see that a lot, right? Like geospatial data traditionally being in, in PDFs. So I like that you added that reference for people using both mediums. Yeah, so 
Yeah, so it, it just gives you an overview of the area where P PDF is covering, but like also it, it kind of breaks out of that 2D aspect of it. Well, three, uh, the map is 3D and we're just, we're, we're, we're normally caught up, caught into the 2D world and it, it just, you, you want to break out of it, right? So it gives you that uh, breaking out, like out of the box kind of thought, right? So. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the, you know, I love the the fact that now you can involve people um, like stakeholders through different stages of the process as opposed to just delivering um, a result. Um, okay, um, we have a couple more questions coming in. First of all, will 3D visualization be available in the future? Um, that's not in our immediate roadmap, but also once again, would love to know, um, if that's a specific need you have and why. And then we also have a question about, um, will you be able to embed or show in dashboard like power, um, BI, not sure what, <laughs> You want to do the live demo again, Anya, regarding embeds? Um, yes, you can embed felt maps. You can do it in two ways. You can go to the felt menu in the top left corner. Um, and over there in the drop down, select file and then embed. That brings up a yeah, file and embed at the very bottom. That brings up a modal where you can choose, configure your embed, and then copy that HTML code and take it to your website and post it there. So um, that already works. Even sites that support OEmbed, which means that you just copy, you just paste the URL and it automatically appears as an embed, like Notion, that also works. Um, so yeah, embeds are already supported. Awesome. Uh, and then um, we also have uh, a question about a uh, size length measurement tool. Um, we do have size um, and length measurement tool and it's, Hidden, let me find it. Yeah, right there. All actually, all of those line, route, polygon, and circle, yeah, um, have length or area for measurements. Um, yep, you can also uh, toggle, you can switch measurements from US units to um, to metric units if you need that. And all of those measurements are um, based on a sphere, so they're not affected by the specific like projection that we're using in any way. Yep. If you click on show radius right there, you're going to see the, yep. your measurement, sure. the last one. Sure yeah, kilometers, meters, um, they're all um, here. OK, um, do we have uh, any additional questions? Um, I'm seeing something in the chat. Um, Oh, someone embedded a map into a Notion doc. That's awesome. Um, any additional questions for Justin or Alvaro or, or maybe co comments? Yeah, we love felt and uh, with Notion. Um, we're really uh, huge fans of Notions, Notion here at felt as well. Awesome. Well, um, if you um, will share a recording of this um, webinar on our YouTube channel uh, with all the resources. So if you, and we'll share it with everyone who registered for this webinar. So if you have any questions for us, you can uh, comment on our YouTube video. You can um, just write into support at felt.com. We're always really happy to hear your feature requests or help you with, um, with any challenges you might have. Um, thank you, everyone, and thank you, uh, most of all, Justin, for demonstrating um, this amazing workflows with QGIS and Felt. That was really, really helpful.